the first video in a series of short videos that I hope will be interesting about the intersection between LGBT issues and technology. In this video, I'm going to talk a bit about the Kinsey scale. What is the Kinsey scale anyway? Developed by Alpha Kinsey in 1948, the Kinsey scale presented for the first time the idea that sexuality was non-binary that most people were neither exclusively homosexual or exclusively heterosexual. Instead, the scale ranked people's sexualities from 0 to 6 in a 7-part scale, with 0 being exclusively heterosexual and 6 being exclusively homosexual. The scale also included an X to represent people who had expressed no sexual behavior. A person that falls on a, as a 5 on the Kinsey scale is described as being predominantly homosexual, only incidentally heterosexual, while a 2 on the scale is predominantly heterosexual, but more than incidentally homosexual. The Kinsey scale is still widely used today to describe sexual relations, though it has its fair share of issues. Before we talk about these issues, let's take a look at how the scale was created. The original Kinsey scale was created from interviews with men about their sexual history. The experimenters recorded the data onto blank sheets using symbols so that the identity of the men being interviewed could be kept secret. The data was then transferred onto punch cards and fed into a computer for processing, a technology that was pretty revolutionary at the time and allowed researchers to process the data much more quickly than they would have been able to do by hand. Some flaws in the Kinsey scale are easy to identify. The scale doesn't take into account multiple genders or a lack of genders. The scale doesn't consider that people's sexual history might change over time, or that people might not be happy with their current sexual history. But I think the biggest flaw in the Kinsey scale is much harder to identify. The fact that the scale uses quantitative methods to answer what's really a qualitative question. Quantitative methods measure quantifiable data. Data like time, humidity, volume, cost, or age. Which makes them very useful to use when processing data in a computer. But the topic that Kinsey's team was researching isn't a quantitative topic in the slightest. Who we love and who we find attractive can't be condensed into holes on a punch card or processed by a machine. The Kinsey scale is fundamentally flawed. By trying to find an elegant answer to the question of sexuality, Kinsey forced data from the qualitative space into the quantitative. Do the issues with the Kinsey scale mean that it should be ignored? Of course not. The Kinsey scale is still a simple and easy way to describe sexuality. When I tell people I'm not straight, I often find myself pulling out the Kinsey scale and showing them exactly where I lie on it. Instead of disregarding the Kinsey scale because of its flaws, I think we should think about what we can learn from them. First, I think we should take into consideration that the Kinsey scale and all tools like it are products of the methods that are used to create them, and that when using tools, we should make sure to consider how they were made. Despite their convenience, computers are not always the best way to answer our questions. And maybe that's the biggest thing we can learn from the Kinsey scale. That we should think about what we're asking before we decide how to ask it.